Kims. Hello everyone, I'm Jenny Axler and I'm thrilled to welcome you to this video webinar in which we will take a deep dive into some of the best features of our brand new BrailleSense 6. To summarize a bit about the system upgrades, we now have twice the storage at 128 gigabytes. We have twice the RAM at 6 gigabytes. We have a modern octa-core processor. And with Android 10 plus four USB ports, we support a ton of peripherals and modern applications. Let's take a quick physical tour. For those of you who can see it, it looks very much like our previous Polaris model. And for those of you who can't see it, I guess it also looks like our previous Polaris model. But you will feel a few differences. It is thinner and lighter, just by a smidge. It's 705 grams, which is significantly lighter than our Polaris model. If you look at the top face, it does look very Braille Sense-ish in that we have a, a set of stereo speakers, one on each side of the, the top, and an LCD. CD in the center. We have at the bottom of the top face a 32 cell braille display with 32 cursor routers. Where you'll notice the difference is the keyboard. It now has a matte finish and it has a much lighter touch when you type on it. So I know that's a little bit difficult to show in video, but trust me, it is an enhanced typing experience. And I think you'll have a lot of trouble out typing this keyboard. We've also changed the shape of the control and alt key as well as the function keys to give them a more premium look and feel. Let's flip to the front edge, and this is going to look very familiar. It's exactly the same as the Polaris model. It has the key lock switch on the left, the media mode switch next, the five media buttons for controlling media playback, daisy playback, and Android app operation, and on the right is the power button. We'll flip around to the left edge here, and we have the volume buttons, as on the previous Polaris. We have the headphone and mic jacks. We do have a change here in that they are now Braille labeled. Above them on the casing is um, a letter M for the microphone and a letter H for the headphone jack. So you can't mix them up. Behind those is a full-size SD card slot. If we go around to the back edge, this one's very simple. We have only a USB-A host port. We'll move around now to the right edge. On the right edge, this is where we have the fun stuff. We have two USB-C ports with a USB-A port between them. And again, these have very specific purposes, so they also have specific Braille labels. The one in the back has a P above it, and I like to say this one is for power and PC, although the PC part is actually for any device that will host it, whether it be a, uh, an Android screen mirror, a Macintosh, or a PC. It doesn't matter, but it is used to power the unit and is used to connect to a PC for the terminal, for data transfer, or to anything that's going to host the BrailleSense 6. The one on the front is labeled with a letter V because it is a USB host port but is also specifically used for video out. Between them is another USB host port, so we have the power port and three USB host ports. Let's flip over to the underside of the unit. And again, this is going to look very familiar. It contains the camera and the battery compartment. And that will, in fact, wrap it up for the tour, so let's move on to the menus. And again, this looks very much like the traditional BrailleSense menus, but don't let that fool you. We will get to power and speed and all kinds of things that will show you that this is only the surface. So we have our file manager. Word processor, W. Our word processor. Notepad, N. Notepad. Email, E. We have email, and we have combined the email and exchange email applications into one. Media, M. We have our media menu. Media player, M. Which our media player. FM radio, R. FM radio. Daisy player, D. And Daisy player. Media, M. Organizer, O. And our organizer menu. Address manager, A. Schedule manager, S. Database manager, D. And yes, we have the same database manager that you guys have popularly requested from the YouTube. We have now brought it to the BrailleSense 6. Organizer, O. 
Web Tools, B. We have our Web Tools menu. Web Browser, B. And again with our Web Browser. Google Search, G. And we've kept the Google Search. Web Tools, B. Extras, X. We have our Extras menu. Excel Viewer, X. We have our Excel Online Viewer. Daisy, O. Our Online Daisy. Sense Dictionary, D. And we now include the Sense Dictionary in every unit. So this is not just a placeholder anymore. Whether you have a license or not, we do include English, US and UK, Spanish, Italian, and French. Color Reader, C. And we have a new application here. We have a Color Reader. Extras, X. Programs, R. Utilities, U. The Programs menu will only exist if you have installed external applications. So we'll go on to Utilities. Calculator, C. We have Calculator. Real Sense Math, M. Real Sense Math. Display Time and Date, D. Display Time world and clock, Date. World Clock, O. And we have a new application here, a World Clock, which lets you keep track of the time in any time zone that you choose to add to it. Display Compass Heading, H. Display Compass Wake Up heading. Alarm, A. Wake Up Alarm. Stopwatch, W. Terminal for Screen Reader, S. Display Network Status, a. Display Power Status, Format, F. Sleep Timer, J. Macro Manager, R. And we still have our Macro Manager. Upgrade Braille Sense Firmware, U. And Upgrade. Utilities, U. Settings, S. Set Time and Date, T. Set Up Internet, Bluetooth Manager, Menu Manager, and Backup Restore Braille Sense Change Device Name, D. Quick Start Guide, Q. Password Protection, a. Initialize Braille Sense Options, Voice Options, V. Language Profiles, L. And there we have another new item. We now have a Language Profiles function, which allows you to set an unlimited number of profiles for different languages, including system language, Braille code, and speech settings, as well as your voice. Braille Sense Global Options, O. And we have our BrailleSense Global Options. Android Backup Reset, R. Android Backup Reset. Android System Settings, E. And Android System Settings, just as we have on the Play Settings, e. Help, H. We have our Help. Play Store, P. We have the Play all Store. All Apps, A. We have our All Apps section, which again contains all of your installed Android applications. Information about the BrailleSense, I. And information about the BrailleSense. So remember all that stuff we were saying in the beginning about the double storage, double RAM, upgraded processor, Android 10, all of that? Well, I'm sure what you really want to know is what does that mean in my practical world? So let's take a look. We'll start with some speed tests. The first thing I'm going to do is open a really large file. So I'll press enter on file manager. Flash disk 13 list item. And I have my flash disk. I'll press enter Books here. Books folder 116 list item. And I'm going to open. Braille Sense U2 user manual. Ver 9.0. Doc 1616 list item. And anyone who has used the U2 know that the Braille Sense U2 manual is like the length of a Stephen King novel, or at least close to it. It's about 460 pages. So I'm going to press enter, and it's going to launch the word processor and load this file. I'm going to press enter right now. Loading. Braille Sense U2 use. And I just pressed backspace enter to stop speech, but it's finished. It just, as soon as it started to say Braille Sense U2, it was loaded. So that is how quickly things load these days. All right, let's try Braille Sense U2 copying a large file from a USB drive or a large folder. Flash disk 13 list item, USB 23 list documents folder 113 list item. I have a folder of YouTube videos that I want to copy. YouTube folder 913 list item. And before I do that, let's take a look at just how big it is. So I'm going to press enter I to get the information. L type folder 1 folder S 70 file S exist static box. And we're going to size 872.98 megabytes static box. So it's over 872 megabytes. I'll press F4. YouTube folder 913 list item. And I'm going to press enter C to copy. copy. YouTube folder 9 USB 23 flash disk 13 list books folder 116 list item. And I'm just going to put this on the root. So we'll do enter V to paste right now. Pasting. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50, 6, 65, 7, 80, YouTube, 85, 90, 95, 100, 1 objects copied. YouTube folder 16, 17 list item. All right, and that is all it took. Again, things much, much faster. Okay, now let's check out opening a media file from Google Drive. So I'm going to press backspace. Flash disk 1, 3 list item. And we'll go down to Google Drive. US Google Drive 3, 3 list item. Classroom folder 17 list item. Okay, and remember that what I'm going to do is to open a file from the internet. So it's going to download and launch the media player. So we'll press S. Sarah McLaughlin, fallen MP367 list item. And I'm going to press enter right now. One, one objects copied. 
Sarah McLaughlin. Title, track one, Sarah McLaughlin. All right, and we are playing. Sarah McLaughlin. All right, how about web pages? Well, let's take a look at that. I will press space W, which is our global web address hotkey www.himsnl.com computer edit box. And we'll go ahead and open the HIMS INTL website, which is already filled in. I'll press enter right now. Starting web browser, www.himsnl.com. Loading. HIMS. All right. And again, we are finished. As much as I love all that power and speed, the real star of the show for me is the connectivity. With our four USB ports plus the Android 10 operating system, we have so much potential in terms of the accessories and peripherals that we can support, all the way from the practical to the frivolous. So let's start out with a bit of the practical. This is especially useful for parents and teachers, or if you want to share your screen with a colleague, etc. One of the greatest features that we're able to take advantage of is that we are now able to support USB-C portable monitors, like this little HP right here, which of course is blank right now. So let's actually remedy that. I'm going to make a lot of noise and bluster and connect this to the front USB-C port on the BrailleSense 6. And if all is according to plan, you should now see the BrailleSense main menu. Another neat little trick that we can now do is to mirror the BrailleSense 6's screen to an Android phone or tablet. And we can do that via an app called BrailleSense Mirroring that you can actually download from the Play Store right now, although you won't be able to do much with it until you have a BrailleSense 6. So this time we're going to connect using the rear USB-C port, the power port. And the reason we're going to do that is because the BrailleSense will be hosted by the other device, the Android phone or tablet. Okay, so I have an Amazon Kindle, and it is popping up showing me the BrailleSense memory. Depending on what phone or tablet you have, this may be different. The important thing here is to locate the uh, BrailleSense mirroring app. App switcher, button. Shop Amazon. Open shop, this is shop Amazon, BrailleSense mirroring. Okay, we're going to start. Button. Double tap that. And again, I'm going to double tap start. BrailleSense mirroring. And now I have to give it permission. Allow BrailleSense, cancel, button. Okay, button. Connected, stop, button. Okay, so now you heard several things. You heard the Braille Sense give a little bit of a sound to uh, indicate that it's connected, and you heard the Kindle announce that it's connected, and now the button has changed to stop. Now, for those who are blind, you actually cannot do anything with this. This is mainly for sighted teachers, etc. But if the screen reader on the phone or tablet is turned off, the sighted teacher does have actually some control of the Braille Sense as well as the screen mirror. So, and also for those of you who can't see it, this is now displaying the BrailleSense main menu because that's what's displaying on the BrailleSense itself. So my screen is actually now being mirrored to the Kindle. Continuing with the visual theme, as you all know, we've been doing distanced learning and working for about a year now, and oftentimes, especially in professional settings and in school settings, you are required to have your video on. You can now do that with BrailleSense 6 via a USB external webcam. So let's go to All Apps. Assistant. And we'll go to Zoom. And I'll press but list enter. Me and chat. And I'm going to start a new meeting. Image new chat. Period. List new meeting. Comma. But button cancel. Press enter to activate. And period. I'm start. start a meeting. Button start a meeting. Press enter to activate. Zoom. Button cancel. Press enter to activate. Period. Connecting. Period. And so we're now connecting. Mute my audio. Press enter to activate. Period. And it should be now showing me on this terrible webcam screen as well. They tell me that the quality is not nearly as good as our cameras here. So you should definitely be able to tell the difference. And so now I am actually on a Zoom call and I am showing my webcam. Of course, remember, you can also share the Braille Census screen and show a PowerPoint or Excel or anything like that as far as a presentation goes. So this is very, very cool for doing a full featured presentation directly from the BrailleSense. 
And for you audio geeks like me, we get to have even more fun because we now support generic USB audio devices, and that does include mixers. Um, so you can actually make a professional recording or a rehearsal um, a recording directly on your BrailleSense 6. And if you don't believe me, check this out. Or, 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 or this. this. Yes, yes, isn't yes, this, this fun? fun, fun, fun. <laughs> no, let's go back to this. Okay, so we have some stereo reverb. And I will actually record directly on the Braille Sense. So I'm going to press the record button from the main menu. This is the, I'm pressing the media button on the front. Record dialog. Record. Left parenthesis. Enter R. Right parenthesis. Button. Okay, and I'll press enter. Zero. And now I am recording via the Alesis mixer on the Braille Sense 6 with some stereo reverb. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop it. Play, left parenthesis, enter P, right parenthesis, button. And you can hear that there is no effect on the Braille Sense. So what you're going to hear coming out of the Braille Sense is not uh, being affected by the mixer. And in fact, I'll even turn the effect on my voice off. And we will press enter to play this file. Loading, record zero four. And three, now and I am dialogue. recording via the Alesis mixer on the Braille Sense 6 with some stereo reverb. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop it. Play, left parenthesis, enter P. So as you can hear, it is actually recording directly from the mixer and it's giving you all the effects and anything that, of course, that you connect to it will come through. The other really cool thing about a device like this Alesis mixer is that it also has a USB return. And I'm actually using that now. I don't have it plugged in. I'm, I don't have it routed through the mixer other than via USB. And I have pressed this little switch to use um, the USB return and so it sends the audio back. The reason that you care about this is that if you're doing something like a Zoom presentation, Android doesn't allow you to share your audio. However, if you're using something like this, you can just simply flip a switch to turn your BrailleSense audio on and off. I've also tried several other devices. This little deal is a Zoom AM7, and this is a USB-C stereo microphone. Um, for those of you that are audio geeks, it supports 90 and 120 spread as well as an MS setting, um, and it just co it connects directly through the USB-C cable. It's just a really it's just a couple inches square. It's really light and small, but it makes a beautiful recording on the Braille Sense. I've also tried these. Excuse the the finagling. Um, I want you to see the microphones on the outside. This is a set of earbuds called the Ambio Smart Headset. And this is actually a lightning headset. So I've used this little anchor, uh, sorry, this little anchor USB-C to lightning adapter to use this on the Braille Sense, and it works beautifully, and it makes an ambisonic recording. You wear them on your ears, and it's a really, really great option. The other thing that I've tried is this little job. This guy is the Zoom PodTrack P4, and this is where I'm getting all my sounds. I actually just press these little buttons here. Yeah. So this is where all the sounds are coming from in this video, but I can also connect this via USB-C to the Braille Sense as well, and it also has a USB return. It has four XLR inputs, and again, this is cool because if you're on the go, you could use this to do a pretty full-featured Zoom presentation, including the sounds. You have your USB return as well, so you can bring the Braille Sense audio with it, um, and it's again, it's very, very portable and light and it's not terribly expensive. So very cool. This really again offers you tons of options to play with and tons of flexibility in terms of using the Braille Sense for audio production and presentation. Let's talk about keyboards. As you know, keyboards come in many shapes and sizes and are Bluetooth, USB, wireless, etc. One of the more interesting types of keyboards that I have found is the Air Mouse Remote. And this looks very much just like a remote control. On the back of this one, there's a full QWERTY keyboard that's actually quite common with these things. They're usually used for Android smart TVs, so you can search Netflix and things like that. But you can also use it on the Braille Sense to do the exact same thing. And so if you want to watch, these streaming services are actually quite accessible, especially on the, on the Braille Sense. So if you actually want to watch something with your family, though, you're probably going to be plugged into a monitor and plugged into the wall, etc. So this is a way that you can actually 
connect it from far away. Now this one actually takes a wireless USB dongle, so I'm going to connect that. It does help if you put it in, in the right direction. Okay, and now I need to switch this on. And so if I... Organizer, O, Web Tools, B. Extras, X. I am pressing the down arrow and it's actually controlling the Braille Sense. So um, I'm able to select, I'm able to uh, change volume. Main volume 9, main volume 8, main volume 9, main volume 10. And do all kinds of different things. So this is really useful. The other thing that I think this might be useful for is possibly a one-handed user who might want to augment some of the Braille Sense control with something that they can more easily do with one hand. Um, because it's so small and it has the very small QWERTY keyboard, it may be easier, again, for people with dexterity issues. So let's take a look at a couple of other things. You can use programmable keypads in the same way, like this, for example. Now this one I actually purchased with round keys, and one really cool thing about it is that it came also with a set of square keycaps. And for those of you who can actually see this, I have mix and match them. So this is a macro programmable keypad, and what that means is that you can program macros and they're stored inside the keypad, so then I can connect it to the Braille Sense, and actually it will be seen as a QWERTY keyboard, and as long as you set a QWERTY keystroke sequence, it will enter like that. Again, this could be useful for just shortening your own use of things if you have a specific program, like Zoom, for example. Maybe you want to set a button to mute and unmute your audio, things like that. Um, you could use this, again, with the Braille Sense, but this is also, I think, useful, again, for one-handed users or pe for people who have dexterity issues because you can um, use the tactile shapes and you can make things happen with one keystroke rather than trying to use uh, all the keys on the Braille keyboard. One example might be space Z. It's a very common function, but for a one-handed user, is really difficult to type. But if you had something like this where you could program that to a single key, that could augment their use and make their use of the Braille Sense more efficient. Well, this is awesome. You can connect all of this great stuff, but what happens if you want to connect a lot of it at one time? Well, we do have three USB host ports, but you can actually do more than that. With several USB hubs. We have tested so many types and shapes and sizes, like this Anchor one, which has a USB Ethernet port on the end, and HDMI, and everything works with that. That's great. We also have this really fun vintage model that you probably can't even get anymore, but I just had to show it because it's so weird. Uh, it's four USB ports, but they're all, it's kind of like this octagonal plastic weird thing. But anyway, it's cool. And it does work. Uh, here is a more common type that has uh, USB and HDMI. We have this little cool one, which is another cheap model. This one actually came from China and came with a laptop that I have. And it has three USB ports and two SD card readers, um, a full size and a micro. And it will see all the devices at once. And let's see, let's end with this one. Now this one has a ton of stuff plugged into it. I have four USB devices, actually it's two card readers and two USB drives plus HDMI. And we're actually gonna plug this one in so that you can actually see that this really works. So I'm going to connect it to the front USB-C port, and we're just going to wait a moment because it does actually take it a minute. There's one. There's two. There's three. And the fourth one tends to take a little bit longer. And I hope that we are also now, oh, there's number four. And you should now also be seeing the screen of the Braille Sense. And to prove that these are all connected, I'm going to press enter on the file manager. Flash disk 16 list item. And it says flash disk 16. And we have flash disk and Google Drive. And all four of those devices were detected and are um, viewable in the file manager. And of course, you can also use them, copy to and from, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all USB drives. As I said, we do have HDMI connected here also. You're generally going to probably max out at five or six devices, but that's still 
quite a lot of peripherals. And remember too, I also have my USB mixer connected on top of all of these things in the hub. So this is pretty darn fabulous. This is really, it's very possible for this to be the center of your workstation. We hope you've enjoyed this casual but deeper look into some of the best features of our new Braille Sense 6. If you would like more information, feel free to send an email to sales at hymns .com or visit us online at hymns inkcom Thanks for watching. <laughs>